Hello, and welcome to the Retro Future. I'm going to be restoring this Game Boy Micro. It's a really cool Game Boy. It's one of my favourites. It was squeezed out between the Game Boy Advance SP and the Nintendo DS. It's the only Game Boy that only plays Game Boy Advance games. As you can see, this one is absolutely battered. We're going to need to replace the shell because there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do with this thing. It also doesn't currently work, although that doesn't typically become a massive issue on these Game Boy Micros. Usually it just needs a new battery. As you can see, plugging it into the mains, the LEDs do actually light up, which is an indication that the battery has had it, which makes sense because these batteries are absolutely tiny and they're getting pretty old now. There's the replacement shell that I've bought. Now this shell has come from China and it is aftermarket. There's a battery as well. We can go ahead and open it up and replace the battery and see if that gets it working again. It's super easy to replace the battery on these things, which is good. Let's see if it gets this one working. And there we have it. It's working absolutely fine. There is a little bit of a tanning issue on that screen there, but it's not that big of a problem. And replacing the screen is quite expensive. And these micros are worth quite a lot of money, surprisingly. But there's not a lot of wiggle room in faulty ones because people buy them, replace the battery, which typically solves the problem, and then it works perfectly fine. So I'm not going to be buying a new screen. I'll just use it as it is. So let's go ahead and remove the tri-wing screws. There's a close look at the scuff and the dents on the shell itself. Really quite bad. It looks like this thing's been dragged across the road. I don't know why or how these damages have been inflicted upon this thing, but it's not ideal. There's a million different types of screws. I would not advise a Game Boy Micro being your first Game Boy restoration. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a nasty task. So we can go ahead and pry off this back piece. I think every part of this Game Boy shell is like a pressed aluminium or aluminium. So it is quite flimsy. Everything can get quite badly bent, especially on these aftermarket ones. We'll check that out later. Uh, but you do need to be very, very careful, especially as well with this uh, tab here, these tabs for the faceplate. Honestly, it's such a brittle Game Boy. Like, it's so premium and lovely, especially coming from Nintendo, but it, it is not the nicest one to work on. This sort of skeleton uh, frame piece is, like, one of the most brittle things I've ever worked on. And the tiny little tabs for the faceplate are on this, and if they break, it's had it. The faceplate won't stick down properly. You'd have to hold it down with double-sided tape. We're going to remove all of the buttons. Again, they're tiny, so look after them. And then we can remove the cartridge shield from the Game Boy as well. Go ahead and slide that out. We'll give it a clean up and pop that back in later on. This Game Boy, generally speaking, wasn't in too bad condition. Nothing had actually been sort of broken or damaged. The inside looks like it was able to sustain the drops and dings that the shell uh, received. But generally speaking, this thing was okay inside. We're going to continue to take it apart. I remove the silicon membranes for the buttons and all of the little buttons themselves. These were some of the dirtiest membranes I had ever seen in my life. The speaker protector as well had received a lot of grime and so did the buttons. So we definitely need to get this in some hot soapy water and give it all a good scrub. So that's pretty much everything taken apart. Let's go ahead and have a look now at the new shell. I'm really curious to see if this one's any good. I did take a look at a couple of these shells a few years ago, so I'm hoping they're gonna improve since then. But uh, yeah, they're quite expensive as well for what they are, even on places like AliExpress. This one came from Amazon, and I think it cost me around about 50 pounds. So it was really 
not inexpensive at all. Now it does have Nintendo markings all over it, but they're 100% fake. One thing that will be interesting to look at is the printing of the text on the back. It's a big telltale sign. You can see the actual texture of the metal is different. I actually prefer the one on the aftermarket one though. Terrible, looks terrible, so off. Look at the micro text as well. It's just awful, but it doesn't have any dings. You're never gonna notice close up. I'm only gonna be keeping this for my personal collection. If anything, I'll make this the one I actually play on. So let's go ahead now and run some hot water and put some soap in it and give it all a scrub. It really needed this, so I was extremely excited to do this to the shell. Let's get this thing clean. Now, one of the things that's really important if you give your Game Boys a clean in the sink or any tech for that matter is drying everything thoroughly before rebuilding it. I actually left everything out on a windowsill for an hour or two just to dry out. Once it's all nice and dry, we can start reassembling it. So everything goes back into place very nicely. This part is my favorite part. One thing we're gonna do as well is quickly clean up the black conductive pad on the back of the rubber membranes just to make sure that all the button presses are nice and responsive. And we can go ahead and lower those membranes over the buttons and sit them down into place. We'll give the motherboard a quick scrub with the toothbrush as well just to remove any dust and the same for the power slider as well. Everything is very well closed up in the Game Boy Micro though, so dust doesn't really get onto the motherboard as easily. We can reconnect the ribbon cable and the other one as well. I believe that's for the brightness. This is super fiddly, honestly. It was impossible to film as well. And then we can sit the cartridge shield back down and screw it into place. I'm starting to get very excited at this point. Despite the shell being aftermarket, it is still going to look really nice and clean and pretty much brand new when it's all done. Obviously, that screen is going to have a slight bit of tanning to it, but the shell itself really wasn't that bad. And unless you had one side by side, you're not going to notice the difference in the text font. So we can put that frame piece back in. That's actually going to hold the shoulder buttons in as well. So you have to kind of hold those down and lower the frame into place. And then we can squeeze some buttons in that I probably should have put in earlier. And then eventually we can put the back on. And then when I went to put the back on, I discovered it didn't fit properly. And what was going on? Well, there was a tab up here that was bent upwards. Huh. Well, it shouldn't be a problem to bend that back down. Oh, it just snapped clean off. I hope we don't need that. I don't think we do, but I'm going to continue to put it together anyway. So we can lower that back on, close it all up. Pretty finicky, but it does close up okay. Once the screws were all in though, we could connect the battery and put the battery cover on and put the final Phillips screw in on the side. And then the final thing to do is clean up the screen and put the faceplate on. 